Hi, it's Nathan. I am doing a math a PhD update thing today. And specifically, I wanted to focus more on uh, prepping a math talk and what I'm doing for that part of the stuff that's going on right now. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth. And then at the end, I'll sort of go through like a general, just like, this is what I'm taking. This is how I think that's going. Yada, yada, yada. There will be chapters set in the timeline here. So if you don't really care about math talks or what goes into that, you can just skip to the end and be like, oh, Nathan, he's doing good. And yeah, and move on with your life. So math talk things. Um, so last semester I gave a talk in a fractal geometry seminar that was acting as like a research experience for undergrads as well. Um, and I, that talk turned into two talks and I was supposed to continue helping out with that seminar this semester, but due to uh, the panorama that we're all in, that seminar turned into like one-on-one -on -one meetings. So I don't get to participate in that currently. And so even though that seminar isn't running this semester, um, one of the pr professors that was a part of that seminar slash research experience for undergrad thing asked me to go ahead and give a talk about my own undergraduate research experience or like mathematical dive into material. I don't know if I... I, I mean, it was a research experience. I read papers. I talk it down because my group didn't like publish a paper or um, we developed a new, like a new thing, but we didn't have enough time to prove things about it. So it feels all very wishy-washy to me as a math person. And that doesn't feel great. But I learned a lot of really interesting math that uh, relates to my intended field of study for my PhD. And so I'm gonna talk about that experience and the math that I learned during that experience, essentially, is the plan. So the talk itself is going to be half an hour long and it's gonna be over Zoom. And the timing I think was cut because it's over Zoom, because it's like harder to engage, or there was some reasoning given to me for why it's half an hour and not an hour which is fine. It just means that I had to take this presentation that I had written for my undergrad comprehensive project. And now I have to like scrap it and take out the like core bits and make it fit half an hour. And that can be hard to do, especially when I'm talking about something like symbolic dynamics and especially higher dimensional symbolic dynamics, which if you've seen any of my videos on one dimensional symbolic dynamics, uh, it's, it's like kind of a mess <laughs> to introduce the topic. I've been working on sort of how that works and having done videos on math topics for such a long time, the writing of a math talk is actually very similar. It's just a little bit more dense and rigorous than writing a math video. So usually what I do is I will go ahead and I will verbally just like look in a mirror and say like math things about my topic and why it's interesting and what I want to get across. And after I do that for a while, I'll like sort of figure out like what's the smoothest route <laughs> through all of that information. Um, and once I sort of have an, a mental idea of where that route is, I will take that gobbledygook of information that I just blurted out of my face. And then I will turn that into an abstract uh, based on like the criteria of the like what the seminar is about. So this one, this seminar is focused at undergrads doing research um, and there will be professors there or whatever. So um, there's sort of a middle ground. So uh, I need to like make it rigorous enough for the experts in the audience, but also make it palatable enough for any of the undergrads or other grad students in the audience that don't really know anything about what I'm gonna talk about. The like core points of the talk are supposed to be like, what motivated this project that you worked on and what did we actually do and sort of have that center focus on it. The motivation is probably the easier part because with motivation, you sort of can ditch a lot of the rigor for a little bit and talk about where things apply in the real world or other areas of math that it connects to. And with symbolic dynamics, it's actually pretty easy to do that. Um, there are different like data storage things 
going on with symbolic dynamics and also fractal constructions and it's often used in fractal geometry as like this address space to figure out where you are in a fractal. So I know how to like motivate it from like a like a pure mathematical intuition point of view and a um, this is where it applies in the real world point of view. Uh, the hard part is then after spending the five minutes or like three to five minutes introducing that bit of information, how to dive deep into this topic in an economical way without losing your entire audience. <laughs> Uh, and that can be difficult. Generally, how I approach this with other types of math talks is I will, especially if it's like a chalkboard talk, and this also applies to the videos I have on this channel, but I will write like pre-boards, which are just like outlines of exactly what I'm going to write on the board. Um, so I think that's that's pretty focused. It's probably, uh, I can't really tell from the Wayfinder, but you know, this is just a pre-board from uh, the video I did on escape time algorithms about uh, fractal geometry and writing one. Um, but I will do like a pre-board sketch like this. And um, for chalk talks where you're actually at a physical chalkboard, it's a really good way to go ahead and figure out exactly what you want to put on the chalkboard so that you have a sense of direction and that you don't really have to think a lot about what you're going to say, because what you're going to say follows naturally from whatever is on the pre-board that you've written before. Um, so that works for me pretty well with chalkboard talks, but because this talk is on Zoom, that means I probably should Beamer it. So if you don't know what Beamer is, it's the typesetting format in LaTeX that lets you write like PowerPoint presentations with all of the fancy math symbols and have very granular control over where everything is. Probably going to have to Beamer it up. Um, and when I do those types of things, that means I have to like outline the talk itself and write it as like a speech first instead of doing these like pre-board things. And uh, once I have the speech, even though that like speech isn't exactly what I'm going to say, uh, it like naturally follows into like, oh, this is where you would like flip a slide. And then you just like sort of like break down that in that way. And then those become the pre-boards that direct you in what you're going to say. At least that's what works for me. I think <laughs> that if I was smarter this semester, I would have not been as eager to take on giving this talk because of just, there. It, it's based on a project I did three years ago, my senior year of undergrad, and there's a lot of like technical math paper stuff that I had to mm -hmm. re-look up and relearn and figure out like what exactly we did because I haven't revisited that project in a long time. Uh, and that has taken a lot of time away from everything else I'm doing. Anyway, uh, there is a plan there. And so uh, whatever comes of it, even if it is a total train wreck, I will turn it into a video as well. So you can go ahead and see that too, just to see like what things I've worked on and um, give you some more insight into like things that I am excited about mathematically, aside from the one-off videos that I put up here that are more so like, oh, this is an interesting thing I stumbled upon. I want to dive into it and have a very good understanding of it. That is usually what most of the math videos on my, on my channel are. Aside from math talk stuff, homework and stuff is going pretty okay. Uh, I have three days of, well, three days where I usually attend class of back-to-back -back exams coming up uh, the week that this video goes out. So um, this video might not have been the wisest decision. I probably should be sitting in front of a, an analysis textbook reviewing uh, convex functions and general measure theory. Um, but not today, Nathan, not today. Uh, so analysis we've been doing, um, we're getting, we got caught up because we didn't cover as much as we should have last semester. And so now we're talking about uh, general measure theory and general LP spaces and Banach spaces. And so essentially doing functional analysis style stuff. Oh, okay. I'm good. I think I'm good. Um, and then in algebra, we're finally doing stuff that I haven't really like seen before, which is kind of cool. Um, or at least for this like sec segment of that algebra course, we're talking about module theory. 
Um, which, if my intuition is correct, is like generalized vector spaces. At least every time I look at the definition, I'm just like, oh, this feels like a vector space. But I'm not 100% on that. I need to stare at it more to get a better understanding of it. And then I'm taking an intro topology class as just like a smooth out the foundation sort of thing. Um, Since this year has mostly been review anyway, I thought taking the intro topology course would be a good idea because my field of interest is topological dynamics, so I should probably know some topology and know it well. Uh, So I should probably go back to the fundamentals and get that solidified, right? Uh, Or at least that was the idea. There are days when I just want to like hit my head against the table because I have seen this stuff before. But it has been good to review things. And I just need to keep reminding myself, especially with like analysis stuff and with the algebra stuff that has been review, that just because it's like it's a repetition, that it's how I've learned everything in my mathematical life has been through lots and lots and lots of repetition. And so repetition here is not a bad thing, especially when it's laying the foundation for a career possibly in research and mathematical stuff. Still mostly stuck inside. I am, oh yeah, I'm, I'm TAing in person this semester. So that has been interesting in terms of the channel. Um, I do treat this as like the last priority on my list, which is, which is like needs to change. I need to start treating it differently. Um, and we're approaching 10 K, which is, which feels weird because I haven't really put a lot of work into the, to the channel. Um, and also 10 K was the number when I started, when I said that I would like justify doing other things on the internet, like, uh, spending time on Twitch or live streaming on YouTube. So I don't, I don't know if it's going to be like playing games and doing that, uh, like one, once a week and then other times throughout the week doing like math oriented things or if I should find like a coding project to work on during those like lives to sort of give it stick more in like the academic area. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what it looks like, but it's something I definitely want to do because I definitely, I think I do have a problem with spending time on people who spend time on me. And I think that that needs to change. I need to start spending more time on people who spend time on me. Uh, whether or not I see them every day or if they are uh, on the other side of a screen. Um, so, yeah, a lot, lot, of, lot of things are running through the brain constantly. And again, I know that like the end of this was a little mumbly and rambly and not really well structured, but it's, it's what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, as always... I am Nathan. This was a PhD update, so it was chalkless. And, you know, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more stuff about my PhD experience and also some of the more, like, mathy things that I nerd out about on this channel. Uh, And, yeah. Again, I'm Nathan. This was Chalkless, and I will see you next time.